This is Jemima Donju. She is the founder of Bricks and Roses Nigeria. Jemima was born and raised in Nigeria and after she finished her A-level and university degree in Nigeria, she left for America to advance her education and she has a degree in real estate. After her studies in America, Jemima decided to come back to Nigeria to start a multi-million real estate company. This started from a phone call. I drove around an area and I wasn't happy with, you know, the vibe of the place. It just felt like it was painting the state black, to just see rusted roofs. So I called my friend and now my work partner. I called him and I was, you know, asking what the possibilities were. Was this something we could influence by design, architectural designs or whatever it took. What's your most expensive? Property. It's a six bedroom apartment. The asking price is 750 million naira. Wow. At what age did you start real estate? Officially at 23. 23? Yes. Wow. <laughs> How old are you now? I'm 25. If we're all moving, then who does what is meant to be for here? I would probably offend people that are abroad. Could have traits of patriotism, you know, you, you solidarize with people here and all of that kind of thing. But in terms of actual involvement, impact, do you understand? How much can you do from out there? And patriotism is something like a lot of things I'd say is it just has to be to the end. What I had was a semblance of patriotism, it was traits of patriotism. It doesn't make sense, everybody's going, you're seeing the opportunities, but somebody has to do that. I have a certificate for business and entrepreneurship from Oxford in Harvard, so I have my transcripts for that and then obviously I'm pursuing a real estate investment certificate. How did all this start? Then? To be fair, my dad's a quantity surveyor, so maybe at the back of my mind I've just seen tips and dates of, you know, building, always trying to wear his construction helmet on site. I could go to one or two sites, I could sit at tables with him for negotiations. But then real estate itself, I was going to take um, classes at Harvard and then I had to choose between deductive logic and real estate. But on the day of the registration, one of my cousins wanted to take a class as well, so I decided to sacrifice one for him instead of having to increase the cost. So I randomly very randomly just decided real estate. In normal me, I think everybody would have expected me to go for deductive logic because I'm like I've done game theory and all those are things that interest me. I just said, you know what, the intro, I think the class summary was very catchy. And I was like, you know what, this sounds like something to just go for. And then I think my instructor is very enthusiastic about it. He has investments in countries he's never going to go to, you understand. He knows what he's doing. So I feel it was easy for him to pass that knowledge onto us. And then the I really started paying attention was when I always say this thing, I saw the graph and it was land value with time, grass of time against land value. And the graph is always going up. And I'm like, what is this thing that is always going up? No matter what, as far as you have a piece of land, as far as time progresses, the value is always going up. Why real estate? Why did you decide to start real estate? I had taken a class that had essentially sparked my curiosity in real estate. I think it just tied together my interest. I love driving around, observing neighborhoods. And so when I took the class, I even became more intentional about doing the things I was doing. And then the skyline in Joss was a bit appalling to the eyes. So I decided, you know, what can we do to actually bring about development? and Real estate did feel like the best platform for which we could kick off like a drive on urbanism. So if you find me talking about urbanism, which is really where my heart is. The problem I identified with Joss was, you know, the skyline. I think I called the first person I ever partnered with, my VP Design and Development currently. I just called him and I think I passed to the water and I was just like, what's these brown roofs? You know, what can we do about this? Is it possible to come through like a design perspective, you know, and change the city in a new, different way and all of that? So he was like, yeah. When we started, it was just like that. What year? 2021. I think 31st of January, if I remember the call. And you've gone this far. <laughs> yes. In terms of projects, I think we have a hotel that we're soon going to start. That should be costing around 1.2 billion. I mean, we're still looking for the investors, the investments, a whole lot but it's exciting having the meetings yeah. the brainstorming sessions okay what are we going to do this week where are people are we traveling to abuja because we need abuja money not just money yeah are we booking business class flights because we know this person that we want to market to yeah. flies on business are we going to the club to party because this person is a party, party person? person am i trying to get an invite to a wedding because this person is going to pull up for this wedding you have to look Ooh, yeah. you have to look all around <laughs> Where are we now? We're at Verscop Lounge along Shinko Road, New Government House site. This is a lounge, it's a cafe, and we also have mini golf. 
and games, snooker, table tennis going on here. So, you know, the mini golf is the first mini golf, I think, in the northern region. Oh, yes, of, <laughs> yes, of Nigeria. It was just an idea, you know, there was space. And like I told you, what was the best use of this space? Yeah. Was something new or innovative? I could come up and then we decided, you know, let's try out a mini golf. And it's really not been that bad. We have tournaments every two weeks. We can stop by any time and actually play the golf game. We have the sit outs in the middle. People always have fun. It's always a vibe, especially in the evenings when the lights are on on the golf course. It took us about six weeks, eight weeks to construct and complete. You can see we used mostly bamboo pieces just to have that natural vibe. kind of vibe to it. Yeah, there's more plantations and stuff that's going to go on. Thankfully, it's rainy season. It was just at the beginning of rainy season we did this, so we've learned a lot from the rains. We're going to do a lot of maintenance after the rainy season, especially for the lights. Because when the lights and the rain, yeah, it's always sparking up. Ooh. Throwing up a flame. <laughs> there are all those things that we've also learned. What are grasses? Yeah, artificial. Yes, this is a synthetic grass. Synthetic yeah, grass. but obviously these ones are natural grass. It's just a mix, a blend. For the course itself, we use synthetic, just for maintenance purposes. Then we all also have obstacles. So usually, like this is whole one. How much do you think it's um, around three million now uh, for the whole course, inclusive of the pool table and the tennis table. Yeah, it was just a lot more of um, gravels, bamboo. I think those were more cost-effective materials. This side of this lounge should be like a 60 people seater. The store side could be about 30 people seater. But the thing is, depending on the event, you know, we tend to move the chairs around and all of those kind of things. It. Yeah, and we position them. And most of the theme indoors, as you can see, is just like a very simple wooden, just basic um, lounge theme with obviously attention to details, the craft on the VIP partitions, the flowers, the plantings and all of that. So this is just supposed to be a really relaxed lounge. Mm -hmm. And I like that it's kind of like a clubhouse for the golf as well. It gives that kind of mentality and that kind of vibe. So that's what it is. Nightlife here is really interesting. I've had some of the best parties I've had here and sometimes they're themed. If you have I'm a Piano, then this week's own is um, UK Vibes. There's drill music and all that cool stuff going on. So just theme the party, make sure you have your people coming through. It's quite interesting. Okay, so this is the entrance. So our secretary will be here, or our welcome desk will be here. You get seated, you know, it's trying to, yes. We're trying to have it as a very formal kind of sitting area. Initially, our secretary was supposed to be here, but we wanted to maximize, you know, the flow of the indoor outdoors that the people get to interact with their environment yeah. better, exactly. So that's where the secretary is going to be. Right now, they are molding the POP. So that's when it dries, then they place them. You can see they start placing there. They've placed the ones here. These are the bathrooms, male, female bathrooms. We didn't do too much in the bathroom because there's bathrooms all over the, all over the place. There are different sections in this building. So this is the general sitting area. We're going to have a lounge around this area. A bar and a lounge around this area. This is the kitchen. They're still laying the POP. But this is the kitchen space. We'll have our Mostly our workstation is usually here and our fire sink and all of that is on the other side. Um, that's an office. This is a store. store. Yes, it's a store. We've done the wiring, as you can see, the roofing, obviously, <laughs> all of those. And in designing, you always have to also think about the usability of it for people. So if you notice some of where the sockets are pointed, 
It's just for where people could have access to. Actually, you're being intentional. Yes, about. where people could have. I know what I want. I would have sockets in the bathroom if I could. <laughs> I'm Damor Fuangshak. I'm an architect and designer, and I'm the project manager on this project. I like the modern feel to it. Yeah, it's modern contemporary. I think our client's brief was very specific about it being modern contemporary. He keeps repeating that word. Modern contemporary, modern contemporary. And our clients, to be fair, he's been very welcoming to ideas as well because, yeah, it's, he's someone of an older generation. But he's able to buy in, he's able to understand our design principles and all of those kind of things. And we've been able to keep it going well with him. I think just because of how well we've done on this one, he's already given us the whole place to renovate. Yeah, we're just trying to finish up this one first. What's your background like? I did my primary and secondary school educations here. For primary school, I went to Prime International and Plateau Private. For secondary school, I went to Bethany Christian Academy. For university, I went to American University of Nigeria in Yola. Um, I, did, uh, I studied petroleum chemistry and computer science. I did a double major there. Um, in most of my summer holidays, I was taking summer classes. I tried to take, get into prestigious schools like Harvard, Oxford. I have a certificate for business and entrepreneurship from Oxford. I've taken, I think, a total of seven classes, maybe, in Harvard. So I have my transcripts for that. And then, obviously, I'm pursuing a real estate investment certificate. Generally, livelihood. I've mostly lived here. I get to travel to like Abuja. I've been privileged to go to a few other countries. I've been to UAE, I've been to US, I've been to UK. Then livelihood, I grew up here, so I'm a very, I'm very much a just girl. <laughs> yes, I, no, I was born in Kaduna, actually. I was born in Kaduna. We moved here just when I was about to start school. But both my parents are from Plateau State. We're at Bricks and Roses office in Dadinkowa, just Plateau State, Nigeria. What do you have here? These are some interior pieces. We use some of them to finish our clients' um, houses or like whatever we're building. We have people coming to buy, you know, creative pieces, flower vases and just random stuff really for interiors of properties. This is our welcome space. So our secretary is usually here, but it's a public holiday today, so <laughs> our secretary is absent. But this is just where we sit down, welcome people and interact with people. And then inside is where we work. This is our workspace. This is where we work from. Everybody has a seat. So we are five people on our executive team. Yeah, we sit randomly. Everybody kind of has their seats, but we still, if I come and I won't sit here, I will sit here. And we just work that flexibly. So it's an open plan. Everybody sees what it is. I think it's better for interaction and exchange of ideas because I could just look over, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I come and I'm seeing what you're doing. So this is our productivity. This is our productivity house, you know. We have books for when you're bored. I always tell people to please stop by and pick books to read because I'm a reading person. This we use to allow our clients have virtual tours of their virtual designs. Tour. Yes, oh. so when we design your house, you can walk in it in VR, feel yeah. the space, you know, you can tell, okay, I like this, I don't like this, yeah. this is what it takes. And all of that. Starting a business up in Nigeria could be um, quite very difficult. So what are the major challenges you face in your business? Um, you know, the exchange rates so makes things, rates, yeah, it makes things, fair. yeah, makes everyone want to increase their prices and then people could be like, but this house has been here since, why are you? But then the livelihood of the person has to be well taken care of. So those kind of things have obviously affected that and then maybe before people had more money to spend, now people have to spend on more for lack of a better word, important things. So you don't have as much traffic, you don't have as much just free money and people wanting to really invest. People don't really have the free hand to invest like they would have before. Well, I mean, I just believe it's all a work in progress. Yes, and I think um, like the challenge of the Nigeria is a challenge that you have to overcome to do what you have to do. I would say for starters, my lack of good business knowledge um, but it's also been very interesting because I think those are the things that have uh, that have kind of stood out for me as I've come as I've grown I didn't know a lot of like legal jargons I didn't know a lot of taxes all those kind of things me I just know what I want to achieve and mm -hmm. I know that this is achievable and I'll go for it exactly yeah. I just want to go for what I'll go for yeah. but I've been able to learn along the way obviously you interact with different kinds of people mm -hmm. so there are the people that would challenge you people that would 
for lack of a better word, waste your time. People that, you know, will just be very disappointing. Mm. There are situations that could be frustrating, little things like, I have just agents know I'm always very big on time. I don't wait more than 10 minutes for an agent because I've waited like an hour for someone that said I'm really close by to where you are. Like when he came, he was just explain how an hour took you here when you were here, that kind of thing. So there, there's all of that. I think in the company, we faced our fair share of challenges as well. You know, with some of the people we've hired, you know, we've had to hire, we've had to fire. We've had to go make tough decisions. Mm. We've had to optimize. We've had to, there are days that are down, there are days that are up, maybe even simple things like we thought we could be done with a project in one month, you're taking longer than mm -hmm. that, having yeah. to explain. But one of our core values, like I said, in real estate, you just have to be honest. I feel honesty saves you a lot of crap. Honesty with your clients, honesty with, um, yourself, honestly, with your business. I think one thing about here is we always say the door is wide open, it's always left open. So feel free to come in with your ideas, feel free to come in with your complaints. Of our meetings is always, you have to say a highlight and a low light of your week. So we get to interact more, get to know people more, get to know how we're doing. And we send our questionnaires amongst ourselves time to time, just to make sure that everybody is being taken care of and you're not ignoring. Someone. So there's been all those challenges, but you know, it's all the interesting thing about business is providing solutions. There was a time somebody actually asked me some of the challenges we had, and I said I, I couldn't feel, I didn't really feel like there was any challenges. And my secretary was very angry, and she said it was my attitude towards the challenges that would make me think that way because she pointed out something. So now I do know that we've had challenges, and I think that's the joy of business. It's business is about solving problems. Where do you see the real estate business? That's for you personally. Where do you see it in the future? You know how you look at Dubai and you know um, the founder of Dubai? You know how you could attribute it? So that's why our tagline is more driving sustainable urbanism. So that when the city becomes an urban city, you can say that, oh, these people actually played a major role in setting up businesses and designing and changing the landscape in even how simple processes and jobs and tasks are done across board like that. So that's, I just wanted to be something that is like, these people are at the forefront of making sure that this city is a good city, like it should be and sustainable. What's your advice to someone wanting to venture into real estate or any business at all? Um, I would say start with what you have. I feel like, yes, I feel like once you have, a lot of people keep, I'm waiting for capital, I'm waiting for this, you know. If we were waiting for a space, we probably wouldn't have started when we have started to get this far. We had to think that, okay, you know, at least we're, able, we're in the same geographical area, we can meet up weekly. So there are innovative approaches you can do to stuff. Um, with real estate, something like agency is literally me telling you, come and buy a house, and let's say you end up buying it. I don't have to do too much but talk. So there's really a lot of capital that you already have at your disposal, and for every, every business, to be honest, you just have to start with what you have, start now, yes, and everything will take, everything will take. I feel like the universe listens or God listens as well, so everything will eventually take form once you're headed in the right direction, you attract what you want. Start now. Yes, yeah. please. So um, if you enjoyed this video, um, do want to like and subscribe. Yeah, tell us subscribe. Like, <laughs> what's the thing for subscribe? Like, subscribe, share, you know, share. share. Comment, what you learned. Interact, tell us how you feel. And also, if you want to reach out to Jemima, that's Brickton Roses, I'll drop their details below the video and you can check their page on Instagram and also reach out to her and also um Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, please come buy properties, invest in just, let's change the landscape, let's change the skyline together, let's actually develop um, our city and eventually our country together. Let's put heads together. So, if you enjoyed this video, share, like I said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.